I am making a different kind of video today. It's not funny. I don't want it to be sensationalized and I don't think it should be joked about. Being from Nebraska myself, my sister was friends with the victim of this case and made me want to put something out there that covers the story overall. Parts of this story are shocking, almost unbelievable. It deals with witches, cults, and even a flying, mind-reading 500-year-old vampire who slit his own throat in court. He lived in the same city as me, so this hits way too close to home. Let's start at the beginning of the story. November of 2017, Sydney Loof, 24-year-old, had shared details of a date she went on with a co-worker, the date being someone who she met on Tinder. She said it went extremely well and that she was looking forward to their second date. On the 15th, she had texted her sister happy birthday and posted a Snapchat that read, ready for my date, which was to be her second date with that girl. It was the very next day, Thursday, when her co-workers and family friends started suspecting something happened. She failed to show up to work at Menards, which is sort of a home renovation, home improvement store in Lincoln, Nebraska. Her co-workers noted that it was extremely out of character for her to miss work like that without calling in ahead of time or asking off, and her phone was soon discovered to be off. She had not replied to anybody's texts or calls. Her family also noted that this was very out of character for her. She never left home for long periods of time without letting people know, and until then had never been reported missing. Immediately, people took to social media to try to track her down and make sure that she was okay. They posted photos of her face and tattoos, and everyone was asking the question, who was this person who she went on a date with? Police arrived at Sydney Luke's house, noticing that her car was still parked, her purse was still inside, and her cat was left unfed. Police finding out about the Snapchat also turned their attention towards whoever she went on the date with that night that she went missing, if she ever made it to that date. Police say that her phone was last pinged in Wilbur, Nebraska before it was powered off. That was when one of Sydney's friends found a photo of the mystery date woman on Tinder, uh, swiped to match with her, held a short conversation with her, got her phone number, and then sent it to Sydney Loof's family and the police. Police then came in contact with Bailey Boswell, the woman from the Tinder date. She had explained to police officers that she picked Sydney up from her house they drove around a little bit, and then she offered to drive her home, but she wanted her to drop her off at a friend's house instead, so she took her to a friend's house, and I haven't heard from her since, she claimed. A couple of weeks had passed, and there was no good news. Police named two persons of interest in the case, being Aubrey Trail and Bailey Boswell. Police mentioned that both Trail and Boswell lived in Wilbur, the town that Sydney's phone was last pinged in. And what I thought was strange was Aubrey Trail's involvement in the case. If Bailey Boswell was the one who went on the date with Sydney, then what was his involvement? Authorities asked for the public's assistance in searching for the two, and suddenly they were nowhere to be found. The family had started a Facebook page uh, to allow people to share any knowledge of her whereabouts. One day after being named persons of interest in the case, a video appeared on that Facebook page that was made by Bailey and Trail themselves saying that they had no involvement in the case, they don't know anything, and that they're willing to cooperate with the police to help find whoever was responsible for the crime. The link to the full nine minute video will be in the description box below. This is Aubrey Trail and this is Bailey Boswell. But we spent the last few days watching ourselves being slammed and crucified in the newspapers. The Lincoln Police Department apparently wants everyone to believe that we're hiding. Actually, we've spoken to the Lincoln Police Department a couple of times. We both wrote long statements telling them everything we know. We repeatedly called the Lincoln Police Department. After about 10 phone calls, we were told to quit blowing up their phone. They said, you've called here several times we will get back to you. They're telling you that they have all these leads. What they're not telling you is that we are the two people who gave them all these leads. Hi, good morning. I'm Bailey. This is about Sydney. I met her on a Tuesday. 
Had a great time. We hit it off. I dropped her off at home. Picked her up the next night at her house. We drove around. I went to take her home and she asked me to drop her off at a friend's house, so I did so. I mean, I haven't heard from her since. Hope that Sydney is found very soon. She is a sweet, amazing girl. But as far as the police department, you. Yeah. The commenters on Facebook and YouTube were confused. Who is this man in his 50s and what does he have to do with the case? What was the relationship between the two also? Some people pointed out a ring on her finger. In the video, she also calls him babe, so are they together? Babe, do you have anything else to say? I was confused about this at the time too. Not that it's impossible, but given the age difference and the fact that Bailey had just been on a date with a girl, it just, something didn't add up. Also, this did confirm one thing, that they were on the run from the police. People were asking the simple question. If you don't have anything to hide, then why not go talk to the police in person and help them find it. Now this is speculation. I don't see any credible sources that have said this, but I heard from someone that the FBI was able to track down their location through this video. How? I'm not sure. The reflection in her sunglasses. The very next day, we get another nine-ish minute video from this, these two people. I'll be trailed here. First thing I want to clarify is the news uh, just reported that our uh, contact with the police in Lincoln never took place. I assure you that it did. We've pretty much decided to turn ourselves in. If I'm a thief, I'm a thief. But I'd be goddamned I've never killed anyone in my life. I've never hurt a female in my life. But we've pretty much decided to turn ourselves in because um, we've pretty much been convicted anyway. But hey, you know, we don't want to go to jail. You pretty much blatantly said that we murdered this girl. You blatantly said that we've sold her into some kind of trafficking. This is just, it's ridiculous. It's ludicrous. I don't have a whole lot to say about this video. He alludes to human trafficking, which is what a lot of the commenters and myself thought was a, a big possibility. Sydney, being a young, attractive woman, could have been sold into human trafficking. This video could also be summarized as, like, Aubrey's extended reacting to hate comments video. Listen to some of your comments. You know nothing about us. You use me saying that Bailey and I make a lot of money on antiques as me bragging. Someone also made the comment, what is she doing messing with a 51-year-old man? Does that really have any relevance of this? Thanks for the comment about I'm not very intelligent and uh, I'm stupid and all this. Appreciate that. Uh. They were arrested on November 30th in Branson, Missouri and were set to be tried in federal court. The warrants issued for their arrest were actually unrelated to the case as far as I can tell. For Aubrey Trail, it was a warrant for possession of a firearm by a prohibited person after having a very robust criminal history of bad checks, second degree theft, sentenced to five years in prison, etc. And for Bailey Boswell, it was a warrant for failure to appear in court after possession of an ounce or less of marijuana and use or possession of drug paraphernalia. The two of them had apparently taken, in, taken part in a con that left a Kansas couple short of 400,000 US dollars. Despite having those two in police custody, they were still unable to track down Sydney's whereabouts. Our search and rescue groups had been combing through lakes, rivers, and fields, and nothing showed up. Sydney Luke's body was found December 4th in trash bags in a marshy area near Edgar, a central Nebraska farm town. I will say that her remains were found dismembered. But out of respect for her and the family, I'm not going to provide any further detail. Now that it was out that Sydney was no longer alive, they changed their stories to say that she passed away during some sort of activity with them, which caused her to be asphyxiated. They even claimed to have video evidence of Sydney agreeing to take part in this, but it's clear that this doesn't exist. Suddenly, Aubrey Trail began claiming that he acted alone and that Bailey was innocent. I am accountable. I physically am the one who caused the end of her life. Me and only me. 
The trial of Aubrey Trail has continued over the months into June of 2019, and it's over these months that we have gotten more and more strange details. FBI agent Mike Massive told jurors that Aubrey Trail once told his FBI interrogators that he had something to say, but he didn't want to say it on videotape. So he led them into a restroom where he whispered to them, which is kill, which is kill, a life for a life, and they gain more power when they kill. Agent Massive also said that a list of 12 or 13 women was found in Boswell's purse that detailed special powers of each woman, including healer, see danger, and fire. Trail had also claimed that some of his witch wives could leave their bodies. A few women stepped forward whom a judge ordered to not be identified in any way to protect their privacy um, said that they received clothes and gifts and were given allowances of up to $200 a week by trail to join their group, which he boasted included 12 other witches. The women gave evidence to show how he would lure them into his sex cult through Tinder, telling them he was a vampire could, who could read minds. The three women who spoke in court had also been recruited through Bailey Boswell on Tinder in 2017. It was also one of these women that confirmed that Trill had a group of witches and in order for her to become one to gain her magical powers, she had to kill someone and take their last breath. Apparently, these witches would gain more powers if their victims had been tortured for hours beforehand. One woman told of the time she went with Trail and Boswell to a Walmart for groceries and they asked her if she was ready for her first kill. One of the potential victims who Boswell met on Tinder as well joined them in the Walmart and Trail asked her if she wanted her to be her first. Um, when asked, she clarified first kill. When the Walmart victim didn't pan out, they decided to save her for another time and instead kill another witch in Trail's coven of witches who was allegedly too nice and didn't have evil in her. Because this witness providing the information didn't want to kill another girl in the group, she informed Trail and Boswell that she would be leaving their cult, and they threatened to kill her family if she told anyone about them. Inside of this cult, they had to follow rules, which included some lewd behavior, stealing and selling antiques, and obeying their every wish. They weren't allowed to wear clothes in their apartment, and had to accept punishments that were physical if they misbehaved. Bailey Boswell also made them call Trail Daddy and Boswell herself Mommy. One of the women said Trail and Boswell had a kill bag with a hammer and pliers. They fantasized about torturing people by ripping off their fingernails and cutting out their eyelids. To them, it was just regular casual conversation, but the women who overheard this um, didn't report it because they didn't think they had actually done this or were concerned about their family's safety, their own safety, or they just thought they were unfulfilled fantasies. The women told jurors that Trail and Boswell spoke more than once about a desire to torture and kill someone uh, so the women could become witches and gain powers. One woman overheard them saying that they planned on recording and selling such torture or murder videos for uh, one million dollars. During the trial, we found out that shortly after the murder of Sydney Louf, Trill and Boswell checked into a hotel with one of these women. This woman said that Trill and Boswell had arranged for her to kill someone in Kearney, as they said, most likely a college exchange student that wouldn't be missed. She said she agreed to whatever Trill and Boswell asked her to do because she was scared they'd harm her family. Uh, both Aubrey, Trail, and ba Bailey Boswell were captured on video at Home Depot, a different home improvement store in Lincoln on November 15th, buying tools they used to dismember Luke's body just hours before her death. Jumping a little bit back to when they claimed that she was asphyx asphyxiated accidentally and they just panicked, which is why they dismembered her body. This sort of disproved it because they had obviously prepared ahead of time. During the trial in June of 2019, Trail yelled out, Bailey is innocent and I curse you all, just before he slit his own throat. Bailey is innocent and I curse you all. Stop recording. 
that caused him to fall forward out of his wheelchair and be hauled off by ambulance. He survived the outburst, had to get stitches, and was finally ordered to reappear in court with handcuffs. You can see most of the trial online, which I can include in the long list of links I put in this description below. At the very least, he admitted that there was never any sexual fantasy. Aubrey Trail was found guilty of murder on July 10th, 2019 for the death of Sidney Louf. He was also found guilty for conspiracy to commit murder. The jury began deliberating that afternoon and within three hours agreed to convict him of first degree murder. The second phase of the trial began the next day to determine if Trail's actions qualify for the death penalty. He will receive the death penalty or be sentenced to life in prison. As for co-defendant Bailey Boswell, she is still awaiting trial. Also on a charge of first degree murder, but her trial isn't scheduled to take place until October 15th. Now, I did hear through the grapevine of another murder in another state with police sketches of a man who's wearing a hat that Trail was seen wearing in some security footage um, in an antique store once. I tried searching online for whatever this was, but I didn't find much. If Trail is claiming to lead a coven of 13 witches who gain their powers by taking the last breaths of other women, then doesn't it seem totally plausible that he's been involved with some other murders? I did see someone asking on Reddit about the Delphi murders and the bridge guy who is wearing a hat in the police sketch, but I'm not sure if that's the person who um, told me this was referring to. If anybody ends up watching this video and know something, maybe you can shed some light on that. Trail and Boswell have been known to hop around from state to state, so maybe other unsolved murder cases could have something to do with them. I can't believe I'm even saying this, but if someone tells you they're a flying, mind-reading, 500-year-old vampire, even if you're a hardcore science fiction fan, like just ask them to fly for you and you'll know. In a story that Sydney's parents helped write for the Set Me Free Project website, Sydney was described as an incredibly inquisitive child who loved animals and dreamed of becoming a marine biologist. A memorial bench was installed in Luce's honor along the Elkhorn River, and her co-workers at Menards raised $2,500 to dedicate a bench to Sydney at Omaha's Henry Dorley Zoo, one of her favorite places to go. The Semi-Free Project established a college scholarship in her name, and the first scholarship has been awarded to a student who hopes to study criminal justice. I really hope that I covered this story accurately and respectfully, and rest in peace, you are missed by many. If I'm a thief, I'm a thief, but I'd be goddamned I've never killed anyone in my life. I've never hurt a female in my life.